Muy buenas chicos, ¿cómo están? Sean bienvenidos al live stream de la 4.7. Yo soy su amigo Vir y el día de hoy les voy a acompañar. Dentro de 10 segunditos comienza el live stream. Vamos a pensar que eh, nos presenten algo interesante. Así que nada, vamos a disfrutar. Recuerden los códigos. Los códigos estarán en el canal, venga. Viene. He comes and goes without leaving a trace, only appearing at the most critical moments. He's highly knowledgeable and he likes to share his observations with others. Porque en alemán, no. She has a cold and stern exterior and her spotless battle record has earned her renown throughout Fontaine. She is an unusual looking melusine with an equally unique perspective on the world. And now, their voice actors have all gathered here today Normal to deliver the version 4.7 special program. I can't believe we're actually all here. <laughs> Hello, travelers. My name is Zach Aguilar, and I voice the male traveler. Today, our hosts for the special program include... Hello, everybody. I'm Yuri Lowenthal, the voice of Dainsleaf. You may know me from all those new character intro videos and occasionally drop in lore on y'all. And I'm Sarah Williams, the voice of the head nurse at the Fortress of Maripete. Si She's there keeping everybody all healthy and nice and making sure everybody feels good. And hey, everyone. I'm Crystal Lee, the voice of Fontaine's champion duelist, Clorand. Pew, pew, pew. Let's get it. All right, nice. So we've got a traveler, a man of mystery, a duelist, and a healer. I think it's the perfect adventuring party. Mm -hmm. Huh, uh, what a wild coincidence, you guys. I just received an <laughs> invitational letter to a new domain. Yeah, that's yeah, not a coincidence. That. <laughs> Gee, Willikers, where did that come that's from? That's just destiny. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, this new domain seems to be right behind us, but in order to complete the challenge, we'll need to tackle several missions first. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's do this. Traveler, Paimon. Would you join us and play Mar Chaussee Hunter Judgment Day? Escorpil. Bienvenido al Arbol This script was adapted from the real history of the Maro Chaussee Hunters. Bienvenido you all will play the role of hunters from a bygone era and resolve a series of events unfolding in the capital. Many of my habits are customs I've adopted from the Mara Chaussee Hunter tradition. They fought against monsters while I fight against lawbreakers. For when I draw my blade, I am but an instrument of Fontaine's law. Loaded. Time to testify. Madam Mage says that every page of a storybook is a segment of the present. So vast and mysterious. There must be quite a story behind this place. So, I'll explore this place with you to the end. Let's never stop hoping for victory. Way ahead of you! Move or be moved! Not that I doubt your fighting ability, of course. It's just so much more dangerous in there than I ever imagined. Oh, well, if it hurts, just let me know. Strange disease, one I suspect that every Fontanian suffers from. But they don't trust me at all. Do you really think it matters whether I'm Melusine or a human? I don't believe Master would suddenly disappear for no reason. There must have been something she just had to do. In the new world, they bade farewell to the Shrouded Sun. At last, Normal. they no longer needed to dwell on their suffering. Or try to differentiate between various thoughts of blasphemy. Such was the price they paid, and thus their souls became cleansed and pure. The way he's holding his sword, he must be a real Mara Chaussee hunter. You used it yourself, didn't you? That's why you have a human appearance. That's quite the gamble. But I believe that I am the one walking into a trap. One day, I shall have my vengeance. That way, Captain Dainsleff could accomplish his own goal. 
dice. The loom of fate has already been completed. <laughs> Traveler, let me ask you this. Do you believe your sibling to have betrayed you? Black Beardox dice: Haz dos Bix Cat 9. Saca la lagrimita, weón. Bueno. Por fin vamos a hacer otra vez la hermana. Guapo, weón. Bueno. Black Beardox dice Código Protogema 1 AS 2 BXCAT 9 Vean si que ha ah, sido fijado ya está fijado el primero. Me da risa porque aquí si el Wayne se ve enorme, weón. Us Black Virtue dice: Haz dos Cat 9. Us Black Virtue dice Código Protogema 1 AS 2 BXCAT 9 Ahora sí le dieron bastante espacio, cabrón Se mamaron un poquito, ¿no? Los de Genshin Dieron bastante espacio Está bien, venga Oh, it looks like our first mission is here <laughs> Fancy that Assemble your team Oh, I get it Our first mission is to introduce the new characters. All right, this is getting exciting. Here it is. All right then. Well, how about we start off by introducing Fontaine's strongest champion duelist, Clorand. You would say that. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's true. In my role as champion duelist, my opinions do not matter. For when I draw my blade, I am but an instrument of Fontaine's law. Evil looks. Shoot on sight. Whoa! Those animations. Did you see that ultimate? So good. That ultimate is so cool. Clarence's strength actually has a really interesting origin. She inherited it from the Marashose hunters. Ooh, the hunters from the artifact set. The Marashose hunters were an organization that defeated monsters and upheld justice from the shadows. I think the group's name has also been mentioned in some of Fontaine's historical records. Exactly. The Marachose hunters have a long history. To modern-day Fontaineans, they're nothing more than an old legend from novels and plays. But for Clarand, the Marachose hunters' legacy is really real. If travelers want to learn more about the Marachose hunters, then be sure to check out Clarand's story quest in the new version. I want to learn more about the Marachose hunters. Perfect. Then let's get into her combat abilities. Clarand is categorized as an electro sword user, but she actually uses both a sword and a pistolet to attack her enemies during combat. Now, her normal attack deals physical damage by performing up to five consecutive strikes. During her charged attack, Clarand uses her pistolet to target enemies in a V shape in front of her. Hmm. Also, Clarand has developed a special ritual over the years. She always polishes her weapon before each duel. That is so dignified of her. I know, right? And kind of adorable. Even the champion <sighs> duelist of Fontaine has a cute side, huh? Aw. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah is starting to sound just like Sijuin. Oh, what? Though it's probably a meaningful ritual for Clarand, right? That's exactly right. It's a habit that helps Clarand focus on the opponent in front of her. In fact, Clarand's elemental skill, Hunter's Vigil, is an ability that demonstrates how potent she can be when she's focused. Ooh. Check this out. 
During combat, unleashing Cloran's elemental skill will cause her to enter the Night Vigil state. During this state, Cloran can unleash two different types of special attacks. Her normal attacks will be converted into Swift Hunt Pistolet attacks, and her elemental skill will be converted into a lunging attack, Impale wait, the wait, Night. Huh. It looks like Clarion gains a bond of life during her elemental skill. Does the skill have any additional effects? Oh, good perception on those eyes. Those Swift Hunt Pistolet attacks increase Clarion's bond of life. And her lunging attack, Impale the Night, will clear the bond of life. Wait, so she accumulates the bond with one hand and then clears it with the other? Oh, hey, that's a really good explanation. Yeah, Cloran's special attacks have different effects depending on the value of her bond of life. So when Ooh. her bond of life is, like, relatively low, her swift hunt pistolet attacks have a Cristo piercing Valgamer. effect, and they deal Dice. greater damage. Como but que es when her bond of life is relatively no. high, her lunging attack, Impale the Night, hey. has a greater AoE and deals higher damage. Again. Ah, gotcha, I get it. <laughs> so... Cloran is meant to use her pistol to accumulate a bond of life and then use her sword to clear it once it reaches a certain amount. And that way, both attacks hmm. benefit each other. Bingo! Though you should remember the effect of one of Cloran's unique talents. So, when she's in the Night Vigil state, any healing other than the one provided by her lunging attack, Impale the Night, will be converted into a bond of life. This unique talent allows different healing effects to alter the pacing of Cloran's gameplay. So, travelers can experiment with a variety of different tactical combinations. That's cool. Also, although Clorand is most renowned as a champion duelist, she has never forgotten her identity as a Mara Shose hunter. So, during her elemental burst, Last Lightfall, Cloran draws on her Mara Shose hunter heritage to unleash an ancient skill that empowers mortals to fight deadly monsters. This ability allows her to swiftly evade enemy attacks and strike her opponents. Her burst deals AoE electro damage and grants her a bond of life based on her max HP. Wow, that's so cool. But if that power is designed to fight monsters, is it really okay for her to use it in a regular duel? <laughs> Good point. I think Cloran just has to adjust the uh, amount of force that she puts behind those blows. <laughs> 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 that makes sense. Also, Cloran can draw on the strength of her companions after unlocking her passive talent, Dark Shattering Flame. Man, that sounds cool. So, when a nearby party member triggers an electro-related reaction, the electro damage dealt by her normal attack and her elemental burst will increase based on her attack value. Though, note, there is a ceiling to the damage bonus that she can gain from this effect. Cloran also has another passive talent called Lawful Remuneration. If her bond of life is greater than or equal to a certain percentage, then a change in her bond of life value will increase her crit rate. That's right. And while she's in the Night Vigil state, the percentage of healing converted into a bond of life will increase. Wow. Yeah. And finally, being a champion duelist gives Cloran a strong familiarity with all the regions of Fontaine. So, when she's in your party, Cloran can reveal the locations of Fontaine regional resources on the minimap. So awesome. <laughs> I'm sure that travelers will be eager to use her to uncover treasure, defeat monsters, and of course, uphold justice. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> so, 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 Cloran is usually pretty stern and composed as a champion duelist, but I wonder how she unwinds. Like, does she have any hobbies? Ooh. I'm sure that she has some interest outside of work. I mean, she's always accepting cosmetics products from Sijuin and making sure to return the favor because she's sweet. Aww, and yeah, of course she does. Clorand is an active member of the tabletop troupe during her off hours. So, in version 4.7, travelers won't just have the chance to learn more about the Mara Shosei hunters during her story quest, the Reparia chapter, they'll also get to join Clorand on a very special tabletop troupe adventure. Woo! I love TTRPGs so much. Ooh, I know, I'm so excited! <laughs> yeah. And huh, with all of that, that is all the information that I have to share about Cloran. So, next up, let's introduce our adorable little Sijuin. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Too excited. Hold on, hold on. We gotta look at her demo first. Yes. You only get one body, so you gotta take care of it. But it's just as important to take care of your mind. You might feel a little prick. Come on, copy a new lid. La copia chafa new lid. 
<laughs> He's so, so cute. It's unreal. Wow. I love her pill so Cuteness much. Overload. The bubble has ears on it. I would love to ride around on a bubble like that. She's yeah. with her little legs dangling in the air. Oh. Yeah, with the bubble gun and the giant syringe. Guys, so cute. <laughs> Those bubbles are so big. Her kit looks really, really fun. I know, but but yeah, but but if that's the syringe she uses on her patients, I can see why they might be nervous about getting sick. <laughs> oh, for sure. Hey, sometimes you gotta take your medicine. And since she's the head nurse at the Fortress of Maripede, Sejuin wants everyone to stay healthy. She believes that taking care of your body is the most important goal. But she often encounters people who overwork themselves in the production zone, so she always tries to sneak them healthy meals. But she doesn't think that's a substitute for some proper rest. Oh. We'll take a page out of her book. Yeah. Seems like you'll need to be well fed and well rested if you want to keep up with Sijuin. <laughs> for sure. She seems like such a caring and attentive person. But then what's she like when she fights? Well, Sijuin is a hydro bow user. Her normal attack unleashes up to three consecutive attacks. During the second and third attack, Sijuin takes out a pill and tosses it at her opponent. I saw that in the demo. It's like she's literally telling her opponents to take their medicine. Look at the size of that thing. She can make aimed shots using her charged attack. Once the shot is held and fully charged, Sijuin's bow will fire slow-moving ministration bubbles, dealing hydro damage to her target. Just make sure not to release her arrow. Oh, and also, Sijuin uses a specially made bubble gun to fire a giant bolstering bubble bomb during her elemental skill, Rebound Hydrotherapy. The projectile bounces between nearby opponents, dealing hydro damage to anyone it touches, and restoring HP to all nearby party members, well, except for Sijuin herself. Sijuin will be healed a certain amount of health when the bolstering bubble bomb disappears, which is based on her max HP. <laughs> Bolstering bubble bomb. Say that three times fast. Oh, please don't <laughs> make me. You know, travelers could have a, a bubble blowing contest with their Sijuins. Would that be great? You can have that oh, idea for free. It's exactly it's like blowing idea. bubbles. <laughs> the longer you hold her elemental skill, the larger the bubble grows. Once the projectile is released, it will gradually decrease in size as it bounces around. The bigger the bubble, the greater the damage and healing effect. And if a large bubble hits a weaker enemy, they'll be trapped inside. Whoa. Guys, it's like she's trapping them in a cage of kindness. Like well, the that, hydro you, you know, you can tell she, she cares about that. Her bedside manner is so strong. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a second. Yeah, Are yeah, those yeah, the yeah, orange yeah, that yeah. Nivellette drops? It looks like Sijuin uh, creates yeah, two source water well, droplets when she that, fires well. a bubble. And it looks like she gains a bond of life when she touches them? How does that work? Uh, I can't explain that as well. Since she has training as a nurse, Sijuin understands how to make the most of a dire situation. Her elemental skill creates source water droplets. <sighs> and Sijuin can give herself a bond of life by absorbing them. When that bond of life is cleared, Sijuin can regain some elemental energy based on the value of the bond of life. Neat. Ah, so Sijuin's healing can nullify her bond of life and she can restore energy for herself. Nice. That's right. While the bond of life is hazardous to most people, it can actually be perceived as a real advantage for Sijuin. After she unlocks her talent, detailed diagnosis, thorough treatment, Sijuin's healing will be increased based on the total bond of life values Normal across cano. all the characters in her party. Dice. Oh, thank goodness. No Sounds like a melusine can make the bond of life a lot less scary. <laughs> <laughs> After using her elemental burst and absorbing nearby source water Bienvenido droplets, Sijuin will use the syringe to spray enemies in front of her. This <laughs> attack deals continuous <laughs> hydro damage. Wait, that's so cute. Even her attacks are a form of medical treatment. Yeah. I mean, hey, she she just wants everyone Aunque to be si as healthy as possible. Yeah, <laughs> right? Sijuin wants every patient to get a proper amount of rest. After unlocking her passive talent requires appropriate rest, unleashing her elemental skill will also trigger the semi-strict bed rest effect. Oh. This effect will grant her a hydro damage bonus and several stacks of convalescence. When non-active characters deal damage with their off-field elemental skills, Sijuin can consume a stack of convalescence to increase that elemental skill damage. Ooh. I like how it's only semi-strict. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. not super strict, because she couldn't be super strict. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little. Wow, so it seems like the bond of life mechanic is pretty integral to both Sijuin and Claran's kits. Mm -hmm. That sure was a lot of information, though. Oh, yeah. I can't <laughs> wait to see these abilities in action. And travelers won't just be limited to the play styles that they've seen here, right? As I understand it, the mechanics leave a lot of room for open experimentation. Yeah, yeah. Right. 
And outside of combat, melazines are very connected to the ocean, so Sijuin always takes care of her companions during underwater exploration. Sijuin is especially helpful when her friends are endangered by underwater enemies. She can use her emergency dose talent to continuously restore HP to her party member for a period of time. Ooh. Unfortunately, doing so will lower all of their elemental and physical resistances. There's always a price. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. That seems like a skill that would come in handy, though. The <laughs> siege ween is always looking out for us. Oh, yeah. Thanks, head nurse. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> oh, and I've got a quick question for you all. Yes. Have you noticed any differences between siege ween and other melazines? Yeah, who might not? Uh, well, I think her appearance and her interests definitely stand out. Mm -hmm. Like, if you ignore the tail and the feelers on her head, then she actually doesn't look that different from a human child. Right? How could you ignore those? <laughs> right. Well, I'm sure it's fair. <laughs> but also, she's interested in beauty, and she knows a lot about skincare, and she actually even contributes to the most famous beauty magazine in Fontaine. Did not know that. Oh, 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 and her medical knowledge. Right. We haven't encountered any other melusines who give medical treatment to humans. Oh. And Sijuin seems to care the most about the people of Fontaine. And she's also one of the few melusines who work in the fortress of Meripede, right? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, generally speaking, not many people are willing to treat criminals. I mean, not even a melusine's open-mindedness usually goes that far, right? Dice. Mm. You're all bringing up great points. Don't you think that Sijuin's differences from the other Melazines make her seem more unique and approachable at the same time? Mm -hmm. In the Nary e chapter, travelers will have the chance to learn more about the background of this very special Melazine in her personal story quest. Woohoo! Oh, that's awesome. Hey, speaking of story quests, didn't travelers meet a mysterious youngster last version? Oh. Sometime during Sino's story quest? Mm -hmm. Well, travelers will now have the opportunity to add him to their parties. He recently left the desert, and he's eager to travel around. Norman so, Zach, why don't you introduce him? Go, Zach. Oh, oh me? Uh, okay, then. Let's take a look at Setos' demo. If you're always asking why, you end up thinking yourself into a corner. Sometimes it's better to let go. Give me some space. Glory to Al Akmar! Oh, okay. Wow. His design is so cool. He looks amazing. Yeah. yeah, the clothes and the hair, I love it. Right? Sethos didn't just get power and wisdom from his desert heritage. He's also talented in archery. Sethos has always loved hiking, and he has a great sense of direction. Whether he's exploring the desert or the rainforest, he knows the roads like the back of his hand. And he always knows where to find the best regional specialties. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you probably know where this is going, but I'll say it anyway. When Sethos is in your team, he'll reveal the location of Sumero regional specialties on the mini-map. Nice. Cool. Wait, so I'm curious. He's lived in a remote desert for his entire life, and he carries the weight of such an ancient legacy. To me, it seems like someone with that kind of upbringing would either be, like, really introverted or just super arrogant, but Sethos doesn't seem like that at all. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. Sethos is a very open-minded and cheerful person. As the successor to the mysterious Temple of Silence, he had more educational opportunities than other people who live in Sumeru's desert. His responsibilities drive him to learn about other people and places. He has a very open mind, and he tries to be optimistic. In fact, his personality is a huge help in getting along with other people. So wait, that sounds like... Are you saying he's a social butterfly? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> he's a pretty busy guy, and he lives a pretty varied lifestyle. <laughs> and he's around the same age as the general Mahamatra Sino. He occasionally visits the academia, he's always trying to make friends in Sumeru City, and he enjoys browsing goods at the Grand Bazaar. But we've already talked a lot about his hobbies. Let's move on to what he can do in combat. Yes. Sethos' aim shot has a special variant when charged to level 2. He can't move when his attack is charged to its second level, but it allows him to fire a powerful shadow-piercing shot that can pierce enemies, dealing electro damage to targets in its path. Ooh. Sethos's talent, Black Kite's Enigma, can decrease the charging time of his aim shot by consuming elemental energy. Some elemental energy will also be consumed after releasing the shot. Huh. Nice. Ooh, useful. Yeah, and also I noticed his aim shots take a really long time to charge. 
So I think that means players need to store up elemental energy to fire the shadow piercing shot faster, right? Hey, wait a minute. I feel like this is the first Genshin Impact character who actually consumes elemental energy while firing aimed shots. What? Yeah, you're right on. Hey. That's why Sethos has an elemental skill that helps him restore elemental energy. Useful. It's an ancient ritual that deals AoE electro damage, and it also restores elemental energy whenever a hit on an enemy triggers an overloaded, electrocharged, superconduct, electro swirl, quicken, aggravate, or hyperbloom reaction. Ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> but travelers also have another option for firing powerful shots. By unleashing his elemental burst, Sethos will perform an ancient ritual that was passed down from King Deshret's era. He will enter the Twilight Meditation State, converting his normal attacks to enemy piercing dusk bolts that deal increased damage based on his elemental mastery. <laughs> oh, that's, that's cool. That sounds like a mini version of the shadow piercing shot, only it doesn't take as much time to fire. <laughs> Useful! Okay, also it seems like the records of King Deshret have a lot of powerful abilities, so, uh, between you and me, does that mean Sethos has mastered other mysterious rituals and techniques? Of course! Yo. I'm sure that the Temple of Silence has a whole archive of secrets. One of his other talents will also increase the damage dealt by a shadow-piercing shot for a period of time based on his elemental mastery. Okay, all right, sounds like the Temple of Silence is a real impressive legacy. No kidding. So many ancient rituals. Sethos is definitely a talented fighter who can make full use of his martial heritage. He's similar to Kalorand in that sense. Yeah. Oh, wow, we finished the first mission. Nice, I wonder what the next one's gonna be. Let's get it. Oh, it looks like we'll have to uncover hidden secrets in our next mission. Hmm. <laughs> why, why are all you guys looking at me? <laughs> well, I mean, secrets are kind of your area of expertise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All your character does is speak in riddles. Speak plainly, oh, sir. Yeah, 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 that's a good point. <laughs> okay, well, I guess I'm the only one who can shed some light on the hidden secrets. Oh, here he goes. So here we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Archon Quest Chapter 4, Act 6, Bedtime Story, will become available in version 4.7. Travelers will finally reunite with... Dainsleaf, hey. who will share more information about Conria's past. Ooh, that's that's what you guys were waiting for, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And <clears throat> also, I, you know, got to break out my voice acting skills for this patch, you guys. Oh my gosh, <gasps> words come out of your mouth. Hell yeah. yeah. You did. Oh yeah. This time, Ether and Lumine will get to meet face to face. Ooh. And based on what we heard in the trailer, it seems like the loom of fate is now complete. So travelers can look forward to learning more about Kari Bear in this uh, da, 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 We can't, let, just can't reveal everything right oh, now. Okay, okay. leave some secrets for me. These are important secrets that travelers should uncover for themselves. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. We can call off the snipers, call off the snipers. <laughs> right? Look, look I, look, I know, I get it, that everyone can barely contain their excitement. So I will throw you a bone to help tide you over until the next update. I'll be sharing a special surprise with y'all. Oh. What is it? Come on. Oh, I love surprises. It is. Norman Cannon. You'll know very soon, I promise. Uh. But first, Ojalá first, 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 we need to introduce the event wishes. Ooh, okay. okay. So, okay, okay. in the first phase of version 4.7, Chlorand and Alhatham will be featured in the event wishes. <laughs> yeah. Sethos will be the new four-star unit that appears on this event wish banner. Mm -hmm. And in the second phase of the version, travelers can look forward to event wishes from Sijuin and Farina. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, uh, because there's never enough, a new five-star sword, <gasps> Absolution, and a new five-star bow, oh. Silver Shower Set Heart Strings, will it's also so be featured on their respective weapon banners. They look so good. Yeah, so cool. Everything. So good, right? All right. Okay, okay. Yeah. I've made y'all wait long enough. Let's bring out the surprise. Yes. I hope everyone Finally. enjoys it. Let's, Let's go. go. Una mano. Norman Cannon dice: Excelente, a ver si me alcanza por otra constelación de Furina. Verga, el anime. Te dije que era el anime, coño, puta madre. Ven que sí se parecía, les decía yo que lo habían puesto borroso a propósito. Verga, ¿será que sí es el anime, weón? Después de como un año de esperar, casi dos años. Jesús Olivero. Bienvenido al árbol de Bird. Jesús Olivero. Dice. 
Black cual comiendo a la xenoforina. Furina. Confirmadísimo, viajó con Dice Pero ¿por qué se separaron? nada más o será una eh, papá, puede ser un video pero, pero si sí viajó con Daifle porque Daifle nunca nos ha dicho que viajó con ella Erga, qué guapo loco seis a dos lz TF Cristóbal Gamer dice igual nos confirma que ambos pasaron por los mismos lugares prácticamente Black y Beatles, ese es lo que más me extraña dice 6 a 2 Ulf BCV eso es lo que más me extraña ¿vale? Jesús Olivero dice por eso le dijo que brutal estuvo la animación por eso le dijo ella, tienes que, todavía no has terminado tu recorrido. Black Beardox. Dice. Código protogema 1 as 2 bxcat 926 a 2 ulsf bcv. Us Black Virtue. Dice. Código protogema 1 as 2 bxcat 926 a 2 ulsf bcv. El Exano Ubicaf. Dice. Solo espero que en la misión Arconte cuenten bien a detalle lo muy hijos de asterisco, 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 asterisco que son los de Celestie para que por fin entiendan que los únicos buenos del juego son los Fatui. Jesús Olivero. Dice. Black, voy a ver si puedo sacar a los dos a Furina y a Lassen. Uf, buenas, Norman según. Cannon. Dice. Quedé satisfecho, sí, vienen vanes Norma. potentes. Yo quedé también feliz, Norma. Me voy a enojar porque no voy a poder sacar acentos, pero... Como voy a tirar por Dainfle y... Por Dainfle. Ay, cabrón, ya, ya lo estoy patrocinando. Como voy a tirar por Alhazen y por Florinde. ¿eh? Así con más ganas tiro. Así con más ganas esquivo a Baishu. Yeah. Welcome back, travelers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. I think it's about time we introduce this domain behind us. Yes, yes, bring on the challenge. I'm so oh, ready. La mismo, la mismo, la mismo. Dun, dun. You sound ready. <laughs> the location of this challenge seems pretty intriguing. Paimon and the traveler discovered a secret room within the Mondstadt library, and they've received an invitation to participate in a mysterious performance. Oh, I love secret rooms and libraries. I've always wanted one. 
So that's right, the all-new event, Imaginarium Theater, will become available in version 4.7 for travelers who are Adventure Rank 35 or higher. Nice. Wait, so this is a <laughs> library? Mm -hmm. Wow. The coolest library. I know, it looks a lot different from what I imagine. <laughs> it's huge. Yeah, it's it kind of looks more like a magic castle. castle. Mm. Right? So cool. I would live there. Please. <laughs> so, travelers will encounter a concierge in the area who calls himself Wolfie. Aww. I know. He's so cute. Wolfie. He'll reveal that this room was created by a mage oh, no. and that he's waiting for a guest to take the stage. He is also a poet. <laughs> that guest will hopefully put on a magnificent performance by becoming the main character of the mage's story. Bring on that main character energy. Mm hmm. Ooh. After arriving in this room, travelers just need to interact with this strange book in order to participate in the Imaginarium Jesus Theater Olivero. Challenge. Dice. Wow, that was fast. Uh, but what kind of challenge is it? Uh, let me tell you. Imaginarium Theater contains a series of combat challenges with different battle conditions. Now, only characters who wield specific Dice. elemental types will be allowed to participate. So travelers will have to select characters who meet the requirements of the challenge. Mm. Oh, I get it. But what if we don't have enough characters in our roster who meet the requirements? Uh-huh, good thinking, but you won't have to worry about that. Because first off, six characters will be designated as the initial lineup for each challenge. Trial characters will be provided for travelers that are missing any of those characters. Nice. And travelers can also invite special guest characters to participate in the challenges that aren't restricted by the event requirements. Ooh. In addition, travelers can also designate a certain number of characters as supports for their friends. They can also select their friends supporting characters to join their own team. That's a nice way to get to try new characters. Right? Friend, friends. Friends. Who, who would say no friends to more friends? Friends support each other <laughs> in staged combat. Friends helping each other. And during the current challenge period, those six designated characters who make the initial lineup will gain fantastical blessings. This will grant them buffs that remain potent even outside of the Imaginarium Theater Challenge. Wait, 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 wait. So you're saying those buffs aren't just active during the challenge itself? Yes! Wow. You're kidding. Wait, okay, the mage behind the theater must be super powerful. Oh, super powerful. And I know that everyone's probably wondering Jesus why it looked Oliver. like we had to select so many characters Dice. just now. But Black characters will consume vigor while participating in imaginary sí, theater combat challenges. So when a character's vigor is fully depleted, they will no longer be able to fight, ah. and you will have to replace them with a new character. It's time for some R&R. &R. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, I get it. So when you select your characters, you have to pay attention to how well they work together. Yes. And also how well they can fill in for each other. Exactly. Involved strategy. And I should also mention that not all selected characters will immediately appear in your team. Some characters can only be gathered by progressing through the story. They can formally be added to your team at the end of an Imaginarium Theater battle or when you encounter certain special events. Cool. Mm. So assembling your team is part of the challenge. Yes, which makes it even more fun. But let me explain a little more about the special events that I mentioned. Travelers can choose to spend Fantasia flowers to trigger events during the story. Now, some events will unlock certain characters for battle, and others may trigger certain perils. Uh -oh. Some doom. So, travelers will have to choose very carefully. Ooh, no pressure. Right? <laughs> Travelers can collect performance tour rewards by completing challenges and finalizing their performance results. The first time they complete a challenge, travelers will also receive a debut performance gift. Ooh, presents. Travelers who feel particularly confident can try to attain the star challenge condition during each stage. They'll be able to obtain different levels of performance medals that correspond with the difficulty of the challenge. These medals can be displayed on their profile. Go ahead and show off. And that's not all, right? <laughs> Travelers can also obtain toy medals during this event, which they can exchange with Wolfie the Concierge. Aww. In return, Travelers will receive special Dice. poses for their characters when taking photos. Oh, yeah. Awesome! Right? Travelers will be able to take all sorts of new cool pictures. No. I am excited to see new poses. Exactly. Mm, me too. Right. And also, more poses will be added whenever Imaginarium Theater is updated. Yes. And finally, each performance in the Imaginarium Theater has several difficulty levels, and each one has a different number of challenges. Higher difficulty levels will yield even better rewards. Bring it on. As Wolfie the Concierge likes to say, when the brilliant golden glow of the treasure <laughs> beckons, don't you hesitate. Just go open it. How can Aww. he be so That's cute? amazing. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 somehow I still didn't make him as cute as he actually is. Of course, it'll take time for travelers to raise the necessary characters and understand how they fit into this new challenge. 
And I'm sure travelers are always looking for ways to get more primo gems. <gasps> always. You just said the magic primo word. Gems. Gimme, 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 gimme. <laughs> Each month, Imaginarium Theater will alternate <laughs> updates with the Spiral Abyss. In addition, the total rewards that can be gained from the Spiral Abyss has been increased from 600 primo gems to 800 primo gems. Oh, yes! Yeah. More information will be available across Genshin Impact's official social media accounts, so keep a lookout. Aye, aye, Captain. Ooh, the background is changing. Ooh, here we go, Let's here we go. see what else this version has in store. Yes, please. Mutual Principal? security enhancing simulation. Huh. I see some hilly churls and ruin guards, so I'm assuming this is one of those monster fighting events. Ooh. Yes, sort of. Travelers won't be engaging monsters directly. Instead, they'll be able to command monsters to fight in a cooperative simulation. Ooh. The Millilith will be hosting a strategic <laughs> war game to improve their understanding of security needs throughout Devat. They'll be accompanied by representatives from Mondstadt's Knights of Favonius, <laughs> Inazuma's Yashiro Commission, <laughs> Sumeru's <laughs> Corps of 30, and Fontaine's <laughs> Special <laughs> Patrol. The <laughs> joint exercise is intended to improve military <laughs> tactics across the continent. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You're making this event sound really official. <laughs> that, that was my official voice. Uh, you know, I'm just doing my best. <laughs> As I was saying, you can play two different kinds of scenarios in the event, assault scenarios and defense scenarios. As special representatives to the simulation, travelers will need to analyze enemy formations and deploy the best units for completing the challenge. In assault scenarios, you only need to select your combat units and deploy them within your staging area. So once the scenario begins, the unit will automatically start attacking your opponent. So sit back and I don't know if you can relax when these things are coming at you, but try. Clearly not. Pew, pew. Ooh, okay, okay, I'm gonna give this a try. Ooh, brave. Yeah, okay. Uh, do it. Ooh. How come my hilly churl archers got wiped out so quickly? Oh, no. Oh, okay, okay, sorry, sorry, I forgot to mention something important. <laughs> you sorry. know. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, but the, but here, we can, we can fix it now. Some types of combat units are more effective against others. Ranged units like hilly churl archers are vulnerable to melee units like mita churls. But don't fret. You can turn a bad situation around if you choose the best units to tackle the opponents on the battlefield. Just choose Ooh. the best units, Zach. Exactly. Just choose the best just, units. Just yeah, choose, choose the best, best units. Simple fix. Simple <laughs> fix. <laughs> In defense scenarios, you need to deploy units to effectively counter enemies who are attacking from multiple directions. So, defeated enemy units will drop support beacons, which can then be used to deploy additional combat units and frontline structures. As the unit's commander, travelers can use their leadership skills to create favorable conditions for their team. And if they're successful, then travelers can obtain Alexa various no rewards mm -hmm, from the Mutual Security Enhancing Simulation event. event. These no rewards include brrr, Primo Gems, yes! a Crown of Insight, <gasps> and a four-star bow, Cloud Forged. Oh, Cloud me. Forged. Okay. And next up, we're introducing another combat-related event, Endless Forms Most Martial. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that this one is going to test some different skills. Yeah, you betcha. In the previous event, travelers only got to simulate combat, but the environment on a real battlefield is way more unpredictable. And that's why it's important to come up with combat tactics on the fly and take advantage of battlefield conditions. So, in Endless Forms Most Martial, travelers will have to defeat enemies according to the special rules of each state. For example, some challenges may require travelers to defeat enemies affected by the electrocharged condition. And that sí is the haber, only way to accumulate progress towards the challenge goal. Now, once claro. they satisfy the requirements, Ayer they'll be able to earn eso, ba -ba 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 rewards. I'm appreciating all these rewards. Yes, I love rewards. Hmm, so this is one of those challenges that requires you to strategize. Indeedy. Oh, okay, let's move on to our next event. I'm going to try this announcer voice. Yeah. I've gotten a report about a loud boom that just went off in a rather unremarkable part of Fontaine. Uh-oh. Ooh, I like that news. It must have come from that crocodile-shaped cannon. It, it, that thing looks pretty scary. Right, Never fear, de, viewers. De, I wouldn't worry yeah. about it, actually. Shoo. This cannon Debe was modified by a Fontanian engineer. <laughs> oh. It's now just a toy cannon that you can use to fire hydro bullets. So why not have some fun with it? Oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> why not indeed, if that's the case? Travelers will need to allocate energy to the cannon and choose the correct firing Debe mode to destroy as many la... target balls as possible within the time limit. They'll even be rewarded for their trouble. Was there ever yes. a doubt? Mm -hmm. In order to keep the event interesting, 
special types of target balls will appear during the challenge. They will produce different effects when they are destroyed. So, be sure to check it out for yourselves in the new update. Cool. You guys, that's that's my kind of yeah, old school arcade games because I'm an old school. Oh, okay, I'm just old. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> no, it's like oh no 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 not that. Our next event <laughs> takes place in the land of Mondstadt. Travelers will encounter a familiar light novelist who recently completed a new script. Travelers who follow her script will be able to embark on a wondrous journey of literature and imagination. And the script will lead travelers to mysterious locales where they will have the opportunity to earn rewards. That is, if they can evade bullet curtain assaults from, you know, various mechanisms and collect enough labyrinth coins. No big deal, you can do it. Easy peasy. Wicked warlocks will also be scattered across the field. Ooh, alliteration. I like it. <laughs> if you defeat them, then you can earn even more coins. Ooh, it looks like we'll have to move really skillfully if we want to avoid all those attacks. No pressure. Mm -hmm. But hey, don't worry. Travelers can take advantage of adventure techniques to gain special buffs. So these buffs will make the oncoming bullets a lot easier to deal with. You'll also be able to get rewards more easily if you're smart about how you use them. That sounds great. So great. Speaking of strategies, the new version will be adding more updates to the Genius Invocation Alea, TCG. Fulina, Fulina, Travelers please. can look forward to new character Fulina, cards, al, monster al cards, and action cards. Also, more NPCs will be ready to challenge travelers in the open world. Oh, and I hope they're ready to lose. No. Oh. They could take a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, the Leyline Overflow event will also return in the new version, so don't miss out. Whew, that was a lot of information. Let's take a break while we take a look at the last redemption code. See you soon. Para el último código. El exano ubicado. Es dice. Esos movimientos de ataque elemental de Clorinde se ven interesantes. B A. Black Beardox. Dice. B S S tres Liafbau. Sí, la verdad que sí se ven bien. No, algo muy se mal. A ver es PS3. Ah, le puse doble S, vale. Vale, ahí está. Vale. Black Beardox. Dice. Código protogema 1 as 2 bxcat 926 a 2 ulsf bcv 3 bs 3 liafbau. Us Black Virtue. Dice. Ya está. Código protogema 1 as 2 bxcat 926 a 2 ulsf bcv 3 bs 3 Código protogema. Ya está. Ya están cambiados. Venga. No me dio risa, ¿no? Dice. Más resina, por favor. Más resina, por favor. And we're back. Welcome back, everybody. We're back. We're back. Hello, hello, Ooh. hello. Welcome back to the version 4.7 special program. Looks like we completed this domain challenge. Oh, was there ever any doubt? Piece of cake. <laughs> mm. uh, I think you'll find I am very, very pro. <laughs> now it's time to tell everyone about the new optimizations in the latest update. Yes, please. First up. The encounter point system for collecting daily commission rewards will now be unlocked at Adventure Rank 24. Hopefully, this helps travelers level up more quickly. Nice. And now for some really exciting news. Traveler's Max Resin will be increased from 160 to 200. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you might notice from the video that version 4.7 will have some other optimizations. Be sure to check them out for yourselves in-game. All right, that looks like all the information we have to share today. Bye, travelers. What? what?
What? <laughs> wait, just wait, 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 no, wait. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Of course I wouldn't sign off without giving you guys the chance to to talk about your time here on the special program. How was it? I have things to say. No, I'm, I am just, I'm so thrilled to join this amazing voice cast, and I'm excited for everyone to get to see Siegeween in action and add her to your parties, I hope. And yes, just see how cute she is with her little pills and her adorable little syringe and ah, can't take it. Oh my god. And like, thank you very much. Yeah, same here to everything that Sarah said. It's such an honor to join the cast. I'm so excited that Clarend is finally coming out. I hope everyone has fun of uh, like meeting her and learning more about her. Uh, and also, I, I'm really excited for these combat events. I don't know about you guys, but I, I've been playing this game and my favorite thing's beating things up in this world. Yeah. <laughs> no, me too. <laughs> Love fighting these monsters. And, and you guys, I, I have not been playing this game for years, and so while, while uh, Dainsleaf is a, is a man of mystery, uh, this game, uh, so much of it is a mystery to me, and you guys were so welcoming today, and I learned so much. And I don't know, is this the thing that finally gets me to start playing? Oh. Are, are you guys a, you know, a gateway? Ooh. Is that what, did that just happen? Did we get this him? This is it. <laughs> yeah, I, it's been absolutely awesome doing this with you guys. I'm so excited for Imaginarium Theater, of course, all the new characters, and the new Archon quest because I got some new voice lines. <gasps> oh, yeah. You speak! Woo! He speaks! More! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for coming, guys, and see y'all in game. Bye-bye. See y'all in game. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Hijo de puta, güey, nos los clavamos ahorita para matar al, al búho. El exano ubicado. Dice. La Atlan. ¿Nos vamos a poder convertir en los bichos estos o cómo? ¿Cómo va el perro, güey? La madre, güey, le, le da la madre, güey, literalmente, güey. Buenazo. Nos quedó la duda si eso, si eso van a ser las monturas, llamadas monturas, al parecer sí. Venga, chicos, espero que les haya gustado la transmisión y nos vemos en la próxima. Venga, bye bye.